The next topic that we're going to talk about will be the metabolism of lipoproteins. But what exactly are lipoproteins and what is the function of lipoproteins? So remember, when we ingest or synthesize molecules such as triglycerides and cholesterol, these molecules are very hydrophobic, and that means they can't simply dissolve in the blood. And so to keep them dissolved in an aqueous environment and transport them throughout the bloodstream, we have to generate these lipoproteins, these transport molecules that keep triglycerides and cholesterol dissolved and move them to and from tissues. So lipoproteins are spherical structures made up of lipids and proteins that help keep fats dissolved in the blood and transport them to and from tissues. And on the board, I've listed the major types of lipoproteins that you have to be familiar with. We have the chylomicrons and the, chylomic uh, and the chylomicron remnants. These are part of the exogenous transport pathway. Then we have the very low density lipoproteins, VLDLs. We have something called intermediate density lipoproteins, IDLs. And we have low density lipoproteins, LDLs. And these are collectively part of the endogenous transport pathway. And then we have high density lipoproteins, A, uh, HDLs, and these are part of the reverse cholesterol pathway. Now, chylomicrons and their remnants, very low density lipoproteins, intermediate density lipoproteins, and low density lipoproteins have proatherogenic properties. And what that means is, if these are present in the bloodstream of the person in high quantities, that increases the risk of developing atherosclerosis. In contrast, high density lipoproteins are anti-atherogenic. What that means is, if these are present in high quantities, they decrease the risk of developing atherosclerosis. And that's exactly why LDLs are called the bad cholesterol and HDL is called the good cholesterol. And we'll come back to this later on. Let's talk about the composition, the size, and the density of plasma lipoproteins. So here we have a spherical structure. Remember, the entire point of a lipoprotein is to create a structure in which we can dissolve those hydrophobic molecules. So in the core, at the center, we have the triglycerides and we have cholesterol esters. These are very hydrophobic cholesterol molecules. And so these are present in the hydrophobic core. That is shown in orange. And around the core, we create a shell. And the shell consists of these amphipathic molecules that contain hydrophilic regions and hydrophobic regions. The hydrophobic regions of these molecules interact with the hydrophobic core, while the hydrophilic regions of the molecules interact with the nearby aqueous environment within the blood. And so the shell consists of phospholipids, it consists of proteins, and also free cholesterol. So lipoproteins are made up of hydrophobic core that consists of triglycerides and esterified cholesterol. This hydrophobic core is surrounded by the hydrophilic layer that consists of phospholipids, proteins called apolipoproteins, we'll come back to these at the end, and free cholesterol. Now, where do we get the triglycerides and the cholesterol esters? So they come either from our diet or they can actually come from de novo synthesis within our cells. So our cells can synthesize these molecules from scratch inside the cell. Now, generally speaking, lipoproteins are divided based on their density. But what determines the density of that lipoprotein? So in general, the greater the protein content and the lower the fat content, the triglyceride content, the more dense that molecule actually is. And so let's take a look at the following four molecules. So as we go from this side to this side, notice that the size decreases, but the density increases. So let's begin with chylomicrons. Remember, chylomicrons are part of the exogenous transport pathway. So chylomicrons consist predominantly of triglycerides. About 90% of the content is triglycerides, and that's what makes them very, very large. 
They have 5% cholesterol, which includes cholesterol esters and free cholesterol, 3% phospholipids, and only 2% protein. And so notice the protein to triglyceride ratio is actually very, very low. And so that's why these chylomicrons are the least dense. They're the largest in size, but the least dense. Then we have the second uh, least dense are the very low density lipoproteins. These are made up of 60% triglycerides, 20% cholesterol, 15% phospholipids, and only 5% protein. Then we have the low density lipoproteins. These contain 8% triglycerides, 50% cholesterol, 22% phospholipids, and 20% protein. And in between these molecules, we have the intermediate density lipoprotein IDLs. We'll talk about them later on. And finally, the smallest in size but the most dense are the high density lipoproteins, the good cholesterol that is part of the reverse cholesterol pathway. So they're made up only 5% triglycerides, but 40% proteins. In addition, they contain 30% phospholipids and 25% cholesterol. So because here we have a ton of proteins, but we don't have a lot of triglycerides, that makes them the smallest, but the most dense. So chylomicrons are largest in size, but the least dense, while the high density cholesterol are the smallest in size, but the most dense. Now let's finish off by briefly talking about what these apolipoproteins are. So apolipoproteins, also known as apoproteins, are simply the proteins which help dissolve these triglycerides and cholesterol in the blood. So they help make up the shell of this lipoprotein. And they actually have four major roles, depending on the type of apolipoprotein we're talking about. Some apolipoproteins are important in guiding the formation of that lipoprotein. Some provide structural support and give the structure integrity. Others act as ligand for receptors such as LDL receptors. And some can actually activate or even inhibit certain types of enzymes. Now, in general, apolipoproteins are divided into five major classes based on the structure and the function. Now, don't worry too much about what the function of these apolipoproteins are and what they are. We're gonna talk about that in more detail later on. But very briefly, I just wanna talk about the fact that we have these different types of apolipoproteins and they serve specific functions. So for example, we have apolipoprotein A. So we have A1 and A2. A1 provides structural support for HDL and then activates the LCAT enzyme. Apolipoprotein A2 also provides structural support for HDL, but this one activates hepatic lipase. Apolipoprotein B48 provides structural support for chylomicrons, which remember are part of the rever uh, which are part of the uh, exogenous transport pathway, and so they're generated in the intestines. Then we have apolipoprotein B100. This provides support for VLDL molecules, LDL molecules, uh, uh, IDL molecules, and this also acts as a ligand for LDL receptors and so forth. So again, don't worry too much about these. We're gonna talk about them in much more detail later on. 